Hey, good evening, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. It's uh, Tuesday, July 16th. See, you've got some uh, cows in the background here. Again, such a privilege to be with you. We're talking about the value of wisdom as opposed to rules. And I'm trying to give you some practical examples to do that. Wisdom is not always a, can we say, an attractive thing at first glance. There's some danger in it. So that's why you see the thumbnail tonight. You have this beautiful rose amidst these thorns. And wisdom is like a rose. It's beautiful, it's precious, but there are thorns all around. Because wisdom is not the way of the way our flesh wants to work, it's not the way the world works, it's certainly not the way the devil works. But wisdom is the most powerful tool that God uses. Wisdom, God constructed the universe. God constructs the beautiful, most delicate flower from wisdom. So wisdom is going to be a little bit counterintuitive for us. But we make up our own rules that are made up by men, which is what Isaiah warns us against, and we follow them as if they're scripture. For example, Jesus makes reference in uh, Summer on the Mount. You've heard it said, love those who love you. Be kind to those who be kind to you. That's the common sense of our world, of our age. That's what we all think. Someone is nice to me, I'll be nice to them. God has a different perspective. But if we follow that rule, love those who love you, be nice to those who are nice to you, watch out, love the ones who scratch your back so you can scratch theirs. Listen to what is said here. Proverbs 27, verses 5 and 6. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. And then the corollary to it, the kisses of an enemy may be profuse, but faithful are the wounds of a friend. You see, if we don't value a rebuke, if we don't value a friend coming to us and telling us where we're off, if we don't develop that mindset of seeing the beauty of wisdom, I'm sorry, the beauty of a rebuke, we're going to fall into the world's trap, the world's rule of love those who love you. Your kindest friend is the one who will tell you the truth about yourself. So it's better to have someone to speak openly of you about something you need than hide it and hide love. The kisses of an enemy may be profuse, but faithful are the wounds of a friend. A little bit earlier in Proverbs, in chapter 15, we get a reason why it's a valuable thing to love those rebukes of a friend. Notice what here it says here in uh, chapter 15, verse 30. He who listens to a life-giving rebuke will be at home among the wise. He who listens to a life-giving rebuke will be at home among the wise. Wise people love the rebuke because they know they've got to grow. I know I've got to grow. And we're going to continue to need to grow until the day that we die. Till the Lord takes us home. So this this chapter 15 just ignores that. <clears throat> because you see, if you ignore the rebuke, if you ignore discipline, if you ignore hearing the hard things about you, then we read this. He who ignores discipline despises himself. But whoever heeds correction gains understanding. He who ignores discipline despises himself. See, that person here <clears throat> who is just looking for the kisses of an enemy to praise us, they're missing the fact that these are the faithful wounds of a friend. If 
if I don't look for that, if I'm not looking for for people to reach out to me, to help me, to cause me to grow, what Proverbs 15.32 is saying, I actually despise myself. Wow. See how counterintuitive that is, counterintuitive that is to love those who love you. And this unwritten rule, hey, if it's painful, it's bad. Sometimes we need the pain to grow. So that's what's being described for us here. Beauty among the thorns. Yes, it may be prickly, it may hurt, but that's how we grow. That's why we've got to disdain these man-made rules, these common sense rules of love those who love you, be nice to those who are nice to you. Protect yourself at all costs. We've got to open ourselves up so that we welcome the rebuke of a friend because it's life-giving, because that moves us towards what it means to be with God's people, to be wise, to grow. So we think we don't want to be rebuked because it's going to hurt us. And I think too much of myself to let this happen. The exact opposite is true. If you despise that rebuke, if you despise discipline, you actually despise yourself. So look for the beauty among the thorns. Don't run from the rebukes. Learn from them. Be wise. That's not being a pushover. That's not letting people take advantage of you. That's growing in this world because God is behind all of it. And that's the thought for this night. Look for that beauty among the thorns of life and cherish those rebukes. Thanks for being here and uh, Lord willing, We'll talk to you tomorrow. You have a great night. Bye-bye.